All right, guys, uh, I had to re-record this lesson because it was just terrible. Uh, last night was just terrible with the sound. Uh, the, my, my kids were making a lot of noise, and it was, I lost my train of thought numerous times, and I was like, you know, we can try to resuscitate this terrible, you know, thing, and or I can just do it from scratch. And I think the easiest option was to just do it from scratch. Now, finding God's will is something that is very... Very personal for me because um, I spent a lot of my younger life uh, just living in this constant fear and paranoia and worry and all this nonsense. And I think that we really need to start changing the conversation that we're having about finding God's will. Like God is just some big jerk in the sky that, you know, he has this one secret path for us, but he has it hidden. And so we have to, you know, stumble in the dark and and get him to, you know, give us a, a mystic experience with a light from above, like Paul or something. It's just like, okay, we need to, we need to serious, seriously start thinking about how we're having this conversation. Um, uh, to start it off, here's a quote from Gordon MacDonald. He's a, uh, a Christian author. It would be very easy to avoid routine, unspec unspectacular duties, and give myself only to the exciting things that come along. I've got to do something big. I've got to do something showy. My life only has value if I do this real big. Well, if we stop and ask ourselves which of us have done these real big showy things, most of us are going to say no, none of us. We're always waiting for this real big thing for us to do, but we never actually have done it. So we feel like, oh, we're failures. But most of life is lived in the routine. The person who learns to make peace with routine, responsibilities, and obligations will make the greatest contribution in the long run. And what we think is there's just this big thing. Well, what happens if you do something big with your life and it's not as fun or elaborate as you, as you think, and then you move on? What do you do with the rest of your life? You've done that big thing, and it's like, well, your whole life was in doing something big. So now that you've done something big, what, is it time to just roll over and die? And there's just this whole idea that goes along with it that's very unhealthy and, and very hindering to you actually doing something. So let's point, I want to point out some very subtle differences uh, that need to be made between um, any anytime you're talking about God's will and finding God's will. There, there's just some, some little subtle differences that we need to point out. First off, expecting God to give you a special calling rather than using your brain. See, sometimes we expect for uh, like a Paul experience. We're, we're on our way to Damascus. We get thrown off the horse by a bright light. But what about using your brain? What are you good at? What are you skilled at? What can you do? What is What are you able to do? Um, I remember, um, uh, for instance, la last year, and I believe uh, a year or two before that as well, um, one of our uh, one of our um, YAM members, uh, um, Nicole, uh, did VBS. Now, she was able to, and so she did it. There was no, like, light from above kind of moment. Some people, well, I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Expecting a special revelation instead of reading the Bible. See, I have to get this special, special mystical message from God. Um, a lot of the, a lot of our songs are even focused on this kind of idea. God, speak to me, but I don't want to read the Bible. And it's like, well, you know, if you're wanting God to, to speak to you, you should probably come near to listen. You know, and one of those ways is through prayer, through reading the Bible. And it might not seem glamorous, and it kind of is something that takes time. And in our real fast-paced society, we think we got to go, 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 But the thing is, oftentimes, if you just stop for a second, you'll find that God speaks more in the quiet times and in the day-to-day -day seeking him than in this big showy event. There also needs to be a, a big distinction here made between directly disobeying God with something specific that he told you to do versus being scared to do anything unless you take a misstep. See, when I was a kid, it was, oh, oh no, what, what if I miss God's will? You know, if it's like you're walking on the edge of a knife and, you know, if you, if you, you know, mess up just a little, you're, you're just gone versus when God specifically tells you something. Now, most people... Um, God's not going to walk you through things. I mean, so, sometimes God does, um, you know, uh, make a special, like, for instance, Paul. Yeah, I, and I know I've mentioned him twice already. This is the third time I'm mentioning him. I understand that. 
But, I mean, it's a good example. God specifically told him something. And that's not always going to happen with everybody. And, you know, you have to be okay with that. But when God, if God does tell you to do something and you specifically say no, a really good example of this would be my dad who, you know, he was supposed to go to Africa and God specifically told him to do something. And he said, mm, no, ended up not going to Africa. Not everybody is called to do that. Not everybody's going to get this, you know, direct call to them. But when God specifically tells you something and you saying no versus well, I'm scared to do anything because I could take a because I could mess up. I, I could not do the right thing. I could not choose the right thing. And it's like there's just a lot of unnecessary worry about what if I pick the wrong thing? Sometimes in life we are just struggling. We're not quite sure what to do with our lives. We're not quite sure, you know what I mean? And then at being young, you, you get this, oh, my life is passing for me. I better do something big and I better do it quick. And it's like this race and, and ah, ah, because, you know, when you're young, you think that you're going to die at the age of 40. And then sometimes you live on to 100 and it's like, well, oh, well, I wasn't really planning for that. It's like. I'm reminded, and I know this doesn't really have much to do with it, but I'm reminded of the last generation of pastors didn't do much for um, having a retirement fund. And their big reason for that they gave for not giving a or for not planning for retirement was that they honestly didn't think that they lived that long or they didn't think that um, Jesus, they thought Jesus would have come back by then. And so they figured why build into a, a savings? It's why. And... Um, you know, but it, it's a little bit off topic, I guess. But sometimes as young adults, we kind of do something real similar. We we say, okay, I, I, I've got to find out what I'm doing right now, right? Because like you're in high school and you're like, what am I going to do with my life? I got to go to college and I have to pick the right degree. And it's like, okay, first off, not everybody should go to college. I mean, go to college if it helps you fulfill what you're wanting to do. But don't go to college just for the sake of, well, I don't know what else to do. College should be something that helps equip you. Not something – that's not the ending point. Oh, I'm going to college. Well, why are you going to college? Not, not to say that there's anything wrong with going to college. And so sometimes we just have this – we're unsure of what to do. And so we don't want to think about it. We don't want to worry about it. And so we want God to give us this, this special event. And then everything that we do, it's like we, we narrow it down to just these very specific questions that I think are the, the wrong questions to ask. Is it God's will? Is it your purpose in life? Now, the – these are just things that we, we're really going to have to look at, and especially in the coming weeks. We won't be able to talk about all that for now because that's a really long discussion. But, um, you know, oh, well, what is my purpose in life? And, and you know, what, what's God's will and how do I find it and what's the connect and all these different things and all these different questions we have. But something I want to point out as as we're, we're going to look at some misconceptions about God's will in just a minute, but before we do that, I want to point out a very big difference, and that's the difference between something that's fun and something that is a passion. So something that's fun is something that's like entertainment. It's like, um, you know, sex is fun, playing video games is fun, uh, you know, maybe for some of you partying is fun, or maybe for some of you staying inside and watching Netflix all day is fun. These are, these are things that are fun, regardless of whether they're moral or immoral. I'm not commenting on that, but these are things that are typically seen in the world as fun. But then there's things that is a passion. Something that is that is a passion, something that God has equipped you to do, that God has put in, in your, placed in your heart. Like, for instance, we know that the Bible tells us to take care of widows and orphans. But did you know that some people just aren't real good with kids? They, they just, they aren't. I mean, there's no there's no good way about it to say it. They, they should not be in kids' ministry. They just don't fit the part. Some people have uh, maybe... Um, sexual history, for instance, that maybe you probably shouldn't be involved in. You know, that's a that's a big no. You should not be involved in in kids ministry, um, regardless of whether or not it's legal. It's just not a good idea. But a passion is something that somebody like, like for instance, okay, somebody you, you stick somebody in with kids and they go crazy in 15 minutes. Then there's other people that they just they love kids. They they do they do a bunch of stuff for kids and with kids, and they just they can't get enough of it. It's their passion. I I have some things that are are big passions for me. One thing that is a big passion for me is 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 biking. I 
I love road biking. I just love it so much. It's it when I out there on the road. It's just I feel everything just doesn't bother me anymore. It just it it's freeing. It's 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 fun. Now you might say, now what does it have to do with God? Well, not a whole lot to do with God. It helps me to kind of clear my head so I can pray. Um, and if I'm extremely stressed, it helps me to de-stress. And when I'm burnt out, it really helps me to kind of rejuvenate. So, or uh, resuscitate. <laughs> I don't know what the right word is there. Um, refresh, whatever you want to say. But my point being, God gave me that passion, and it's something that helps me with my difficult job or with difficulties in my life. I always have biking to go to. Um, or if something happens to my legs or anything and I get an injury, I, I, ha I love music. I, I, you know, and, and there's another good example. You know, everybody likes listening to music. I mean, even Satan likes listening to music. But there's some people who have a passion that comes out in their playing. You know what I mean? It, it's... I'm not talking about people who can listen to music and just like fall in love with it and just like, you know, lose themselves in the music. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who themselves create music and it comes just from this place in their heart and it's just you you feel the notes. When when they play it's like you hear what their heart is speaking. And even though you're not quite sure what the words are that their heart is saying, you you somehow just know what's being said. It's like um, there was a book that came out, a fantasy book, probably 15 years ago. It was called Aragon. And this this boy was able to communicate with his dragon, but at first they weren't able to talk. Uh, they, they didn't know words, but they knew uh, emotions and they knew, you know, that, that kind of that feel. And, and it's kind of something similar with people who really speak music. They create a song and you just feel it. I'm not talking about a one-hit wonder or something that's catchy. I'm, I'm talking about those people who write a song and it just absorbs you. And somehow, through the course of the song, you just stop and say, yes, I understand. I, I don't know exactly what it is I understand. I can't put it to words, but I just know. And that's a passion. So whenever you're talking about God's will or your purpose in life, it's important to make a big distinction between something that's just fun and something that's a passion. Like, oh, I enjoy playing video games, so that's that's God's will for my life. And it's like, um, well, no, that's more just a, just something that's fun. And I mean, that's not something that's unique. Everybody likes playing video games. I mean, everybody. It's just one of those things. That the whole purpose of a video game is to have fun. Now, obviously, there are some games that we will not speak of that are not really fun and they didn't do a good job of. Ugh. Anyways, nah, I'm not bitter. Um, <laughs> Uh, but then there's a passion, something that, that God has just placed in your heart. And we're going to look more at this as we get into finding God's will, whatever that means. Um, and, okay, so let's look, look at a couple misconceptions when it comes to God's will. Number one, if you tried something and it didn't work, that's proof it isn't God's will. 99% of what you do as a pastor is trying, or as a leader in general is trying different things. You can't be afraid to try things. If you are afraid to try th new things, I can guarantee you, you won't you won't succeed. You won't you won't you won't accomplish something new, something different. You have to be willing to take a step, take a chance. That's the point of of well of, of a lot of life. And um, it's like Paul. He was he was a big risk taker. Well, let's go here. Let's do this. You know. And the problem with this, and a question was asked last night, is you know. Uh, what about God opening and closing doors? And it's not necessarily that God doesn't open and close doors. That's not what I'm saying. But it's the idea that goes along with that. Like if there are, if there's any difficulty, then it's God shutting a door. And God would never open a door that requires um, difficulties. And you see what I mean? It's just the whole idea that goes with it that I'm against. Not to say that. And, and here's the thing: a lot of times we think that God's closing a door, but actually He's opening a door. And then sometimes we think that God's opening a door, and it's not. It's just, you know, an opportunity that doesn't really honor God. And we have to choose between what's right and what is um, what will uh, make us temporarily happy. So it's, it's kind of this whole idea that goes along with it. So, it, it, hey, if you tried something and it didn't work, that's proof it isn't God's will. Well, then that would mean that Jesus uh, was not walking in God's will. That would mean that Moses was not walking in God's will. I mean, look at the book of Exodus. I mean, here's this guy who has, like, literally a problem from, from the Israelites and from, from Pharaoh, and everything just – nothing seems to work for this guy. And uh, so, hey, it must not have been God's, work, God's will. And – 
people just take this too far. I know one person who went to college, it didn't work out, they had to drop out. Well, then they wanted to go back, and somebody asked a question. This actually happened more than once, uh, just that I have been there. I imagine it happened even more uh, for situations that I wasn't there. But for I know first firsthand, I was standing there, and the person said, do you think that it's maybe not God's will that you go to school? Or else he would have, you know, made a way or whatever. It's like, oh, yeah. And maybe he'll do all of our work for us and all of our thinking for us. And uh, we won't have to be equipped for what he has for us in the future. And we shouldn't be in a pattern of growth. And we should just kind of sit around like turds and just wait for God to do everything. See what I mean? Is this, it doesn't really make sense. If you tried something that didn't work, that's not proof that it isn't God's will. Maybe try a different way. Maybe try a different thing. See what I mean? If it, it's, it's, it's something that you have to innovate. You have to think about. Um... It's not. It's not like we make it. You need to receive a mystical message from God about what is His will. So, in other words, um, there's this like one thing, and and you have to. Do you know how many people I have talked to that are so discouraged because they they've tried to get this this mystical message from God, and oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not spiritual enough. I messed up too many times. I, God, God's just mad at me. Um, you know, it's because of this. It's you know, I I'm worthless and all this stuff. And it's like whoa. That's a big misconception that really needs to stop. Not everybody's going to receive some mystical message from God. And, um, in fact, the majority of people don't. Um, and then there's also the point that for some people, or maybe for all people, even if God was to do something big and showy, it's still not enough. You might say, oh, no, no, if God did this big thing, then I would know God's will. Okay, well, let's roll through that, okay? Uh, you've got, let's go back to the Israelites. God does all these miracles, and at, at God says, okay, at the end of these 400 years, I'm going to do this. And so then at the end of the 400 years, God does it. And he does it with a bunch of miracles and brings them out. And then he also makes sure that Pharaoh is not able to, to follow them any longer, like through the desert. And that's still not good enough for them. He he saves them from from different uh, skirmishes where people attack them. He he provides you know uh, food and sustenance for them in the wilderness. Still, we get to the book of Numbers, and they're grumbling and complaining. Oh, we we can't possibly conquer Canaan. Uh, you know, this is just terrible, and it couldn't be worse. It would be better to be a slave in Egypt than it was would to be uh, a free nomad. And it's just like okay. Um, so there is something that needs to be said there. Sometimes people think that, oh, if, if I had this message, then I... No, no, no. The idea that you need to receive some mystical message from God is, is completely false. First off, it's, it's based on the idea that um, every moment of your life is predestined and you have to discover it. Um, or else you could fall out of the predestination and mess up, which is actually a contradiction in terms. Because by nature, predestination means that it would be predestined to happen. But if you can fall out of the predestination, then that really isn't pre... See what I mean? That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, and that's kind of like one of the big issues about it. But then there's other issues about it too. Um, not everybody is going to have that one big thing. You know what I mean? And that's okay. We don't have to be the main characters in the story. Um, another big, big mistake that people make is attaching value to a to-do list. Basically, I am only valuable if I do enough, if I earn my salvation, if I prove my worth to God, if I have done enough things at the end of the day or at the end of my life. Basically, I am only valuable for as much as I am able to accomplish. And this is just a terrible idea, and it's something that obviously diminishes what the Bible says, what God teaches, uh, what our life is about, what is God's will, all kinds of different things. Um, another thing is, when we're talking about God's will, it's oftentimes for, people like talking about the outside things, what, what we're doing. Overfocused on outer performance, playing the right part, doing the right accomplishments. But surprisingly, people don't really focus about the inner development. God's will is more about who we are than what we do, and that's hard for us because we want to think that we're in control, that we are somehow um, these powerhouses of accomplishment. I don't have to depend on God. It's God who's depending on me. I can go and I can go and conquer the world, and God will be in awe. And it's just it's just not it's just this, a false idea of what is involved. Um, another thing is people really do attempt to manipulate God. Um, they try to earn blessing, you know, if I do enough things, they try to gain his response if they have perfect prayers. They try to earn his love or salvation by look how, look, look how much I, look, look how much I'm worth and trying to manipulate God in the aspect of, you know, I, I did this God, so you have to do this. Well, 
if you don't do this, then I'm just going to be really upset. I mean, look at the different people. I, I've talked to a lot of different people who said, well, I tried the whole God thing, but he didn't heal my grandma. Everybody's going to die. Like, what? not to make light of the death itself, but it, that's not a big surprise. People have been dying ever since they started living. I mean, it's not really something that you should be that surprised about. And it's definitely not something that should cause you to lose faith. So then people, another big thing is, oh, well, I tried, uh, you know, the whole God thing, but Christians are so ungodly. And it's like, I, I, I hear you, I hear you on that. You know, it, no big complaint there, but that doesn't disprove God. And so what we try to do is we try to manipulate God into acting or into doing what we want him to do or, you know, taking away the, the problems of the conflict. And even in the sense of um, if I do all the right things, then I'll walk in blessings and I'll be in God's will. And it's like, even if you do all the right things, it's not going to make – it's not going to work like that. Now, there's a lot more to say here, but obviously um, that's the end of this lesson. Um, in uh, If you go to Yams in person, uh, next week we're watching a video, video by Mike Winger and uh, Alyssa hmm, Childers or – crap, uh, something like that. I'm really sorry that I'm having a brain fart there. Uh, it's answering progressive memes. Uh, and then in two weeks, uh, I'll start talking about, again, about, okay, so what is God's will? How do you find it? You know, and then we'll look at, you know, how to find your purpose in life and then asking the hard questions like uh, finding the one, uh, finding the right job, those kinds of things. And, um, okay, so that's it.